Welcome to my video. I'll jump right in. Since purchasing my Langmere Systems Plasma table, I've been looking for projects to practice on. And since my autocross group was looking to replace the old tired Christmas tree with a new fandangled one, I thought it would be a great opportunity to flex that muscle and build something. One of the guys in the autocross group is an engineer, so naturally it was his job to design everything, and me, the guy with the plasma table, to cut it out and build it. The reason for this video is to try and help the people that have just bought this table and are trying to learn Fusion 360. So I asked the fellow who was creating the tree, building it and wiring it, to send over a project file in a DXF format. Unfortunately, I accidentally gave him the wrong dimensions of my table, and that meant that all the files that he had created were too large for me to be able to cut out. Not a horrible problem, just adds an extra step. From a new project, I'm going to insert the DXF file to the XY plane. After you've selected your file, it'll take a few seconds for it to do its thing. There it goes. For this video, we're going to focus primarily on cutting out the stem of this tree. After the file finishes importing, it is now a sketch. The first thing I have to do is trim this outer borderline. I don't need it. The trim tool is in the modify drop down category, or just hit the letter T on your keyboard. Now, because I gave the designer the wrong dimensions, I'm going to have to cut this piece in two so that I have two pieces that will fit on my table. Still in the edit a sketch screen, I'm going to draw a line approximately at the center point. It doesn't have to be accurate. I'm going to temporarily remove 40 millimeters from the upper half of this diagram. The only reason I'm doing that is so that I can see the project a little easier and move the upper portion easier. Trim tool again, just to get rid of these extra pieces. Select the upper portion, hit the M key for move, and run into another problem. See how it's trying to drag the bottom as well? Hmm, how do we fix that? Now, because this piece was originally one piece, there are constraints locking the two together. So you've just got to figure out which one it is, delete it. This will allow the program to think of this as two separate pieces. And now I'm going to add that 40 millimeters back in that I took out earlier. I'm sure there's a few other ways to do this. This is just the way I do it. Now, before we move on to the manufacturer stage, I thought I'd deviate for a second. In search and install this add-on from Fusion 360, it's called Check Sketch. Fusion 360 Life got a whole bunch more simpler after I installed this. In the next series of steps, sometimes you run into problem when you're attempting to generate a tool path. And one of the more popular reasons why is because you have what's called an open loop. Let's make it really obvious here so we can see what's going on. We make a rectangle first, then we throw a little circle on it, then we delete a couple things. Fusion's toolpath generator doesn't know what to do with this line. And by using this check sketch add-on, we've managed to identify a problem area. Rectify and get rid of that hanging line there, and all of a sudden we get a no open loops message, which is what we want. But without that no open loops message, you may run into problems at the next step. Now back to my tree. Once you're happy with your design of your sketch, you're going to move to the manufacture stage. Under the fabrication tab, we're going to create a new setup. Ensure your operation type is set to cutting. Assuming that you designed your project using the XY plane, you will leave the model orientation as is. Leave your origin to stock box point, and then pick a corner that you will be zeroing out your XY on your crossfire. Then activate the sketch button, and then click somewhere within your sketch. Notice how it no longer says sketch, but says the project name. For basic cuts like this, I don't make any changes under the stock or the post-processing tabs. Just click OK, and we're ready for the next step. From the cutting dropdown, we're going to select 2D Profile. First up is to select your cutting tool, which in my case is the Razor Weld 45. We're going to set our feed rates, which are going to change from project to project depending on what kind of metal you're cutting. In my case, I'm cutting 10 gauge steel, so I'm going to use 65, 45, 65. There are charts that you can find online that will help you make these decisions, and you experiment. 
The next tab over is the geometry tab where you are going to select all the contours, the lines, the holes that you want your crossfire to cut out. And I don't mind saying I struggled with this quite a bit when I was first learning. The issue I had was trying to figure out what side of the line Fusion was telling it to cut on. Was it on the inside or the outside? Now Fusion is pretty good at guessing what side of the line you want cut, but it's not perfect. For this simple piece, it guessed accurately, but we're gonna come back to this in a few minutes because I think this needs a little bit more attention. Next tab over is the Heights tab. This doesn't apply to my machine as I don't have the Torch Height controller. Passes tab, the only thing I change here is compensation type to in computer. There are several things I'm gonna change in the linking tab. But before I do that, first off, there's a little bit of a glitch. I'm on a Mac computer. And when I click on keep nozzle down, it kind of shrinks the whole box and makes it very difficult to see anything. So normally I do that after. Lead in radius to 0 0.06. I change the sweep angle to 90 degrees. Lead in distance I leave alone. Now I'm gonna click on keep nozzle down and everything's gonna shrink. It's really irritating fusion. Max stay down distance is 25.3, which is the size of my machine. Cut stock clearance normally says 0.1. For some reason, I'm accidentally putting 0.1 when it already says 0.1. Uh, sorry. And stay down feed rate is 300 IPM. Lead outs is deselected. Finally, click on entry position and then just select a spot on your diagram you want your torch to start. Click OK and Fusion calculates a tool path. Under actions, you can select simulate. This is where Fusion will show you the tool path that it has calculated for you. And this is where it was a little confusing for me. This piece was pretty simple. I'm gonna switch temporarily to another project I was working on that's a little more complicated to show you where my problems were. Here's a piece I was working on a couple months ago. It's a little more complicated. When we look at the generated tool path, we can see that some of the cuts are to the inside of the line and some are to the outside. We can tell which side it's cutting on by looking at this little V. This is your torch lead-in where it lights before it approaches the line it wants to cut. These top four little brackets I want all cut on the outside, but if you look at each one, each one is different. And obviously here I want this cut on the inside. Thankfully, we can edit this. Just go back into your 2D profile, select the Geometry tab again, and just click directly on the red arrow of all the affected pieces that you want to change. Click the OK button and it will recalculate a new path. And voila, it's now cutting where I want it to cut. All right, so from Fusion 360 down at my actual laptop, I'm going to open up my project here. And I'm just going to export the file right there. We're going to be a post process. We're just going to label this file. When you were first setting up your machine, you should have set up the post processing system that Langmuir provided for you specifically for Fusion 360. We're going to set up fire control and load the file that we just created. Okay, we want the tree stem right there. Let me try that one first. Okay. Set your piece up and then zero your X, Y, and then send it. And yes, I do tend to hold my smaller pieces. Because my machine doesn't have a torch height controller, I'm always worried about catching something and ruining my piece. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you got something out of it. And here's the tree in action. I know Fusion 360 can be a little bit frustrating when you're just starting off, but hang in there. You'll get it. And it's so worth it.